for joining us this evening. Uh, we are very, very blessed to have with us our uh, amazing guest speaker that traveled Canada with us and went to eight different cities. Uh, she's just an amazing speaker, very dynamic and just a heart of gold, and that is Cindy Clement. And she was able to come with us across Canada and talk about an amazing new product that we have now in Canada called Berberine. And for those of you that weren't able to see her in person, uh, you'll be able to get all the information here this evening. Um, I know some of you have um, typed in questions here. Are these slides available to us later? Um, and absolutely they will be. So this um, is being recorded and will be online um, available at the end of this week. But I'll talk a little bit more about that um, as we go. So without further ado, I really uh, want to turn this over to Cindy Clement and she's going to be talking about berberine and changing your diet and changing your gut microbiome. So uh, Cindy, thank you so much for being with us this evening and for sharing your, uh, your time with us. Uh, it's absolutely my pleasure. We had so much fun traveling across Canada. You folks really live in a very beautiful country and a lot of really amazing people. It's it's always my honor and pleasure to uh, uh, travel and, and meet with all you folks. And so for those of you whose city we didn't attend, we have got some information to share with you this evening. Next. Thank you. Um, here we're looking at a slide that talks about global trends, global trends in health. And what I've been saying uh, week after week is this really isn't a health trend. What we call this is an ill health trend. Uh, the National Institutes of Health in the States is telling us that 69% of the adults are overweight or obese in our country. And certainly, we are not just seeing these numbers in the States. We're seeing them globally. There are a global, uh, global obesity happening everywhere. The Centers for Disease Control are telling us that 29 million Americans are already diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, and we've got another 8 million or so that will be diagnosed this year. And again, these are numbers that are happening all over the world. And lastly, as we, as we talk about cardiovascular disease, here, the American Heart Association tells us that someone dies of cardiovascular disease every 43 seconds. I mean, folks, when you start to think about how many people will die just this hour that we're talking tonight of cardiovascular disease, the numbers are just astronomical. Next. And what we're looking at here is um, Oh, kind of an example of what the problem is. And the problem is, is that in the past, Western medicine has focused kind of where the blue sky is and on that tree. So for instance, you go to a, a physician or a clinic and you say that, you know, I've got hypertension. And they say, well, you know, I've got a, I've got a prescription drug for that. Or I've got a thyroid issue. Well, I've got a drug for that. And I'm anxious and I've got a drug for that. And the problem is, is that Western medicine has not been trained in holistic medicine. So I will give them that. I mean, they, they have not been trained. And really, there's very little money for pharmaceutical companies in selling herbs. I mean, they make a lot of money. My granddaughter, she's five months old and she's extremely ill right now. And uh, her parents filled a prescription that was over $300. You know, you can get a lot of herbs for that. And so the pharmaceutical companies aren't really excited about developing uh, a, pl a, a plant medicine because, again, the cost. So here we're looking at a, a picture here where we've got Western medicine focusing on the top, and they are, they are writing prescriptions for this stuff. But where most of you in this group and... Most people in Nature Sunshine, we are looking at the root cause. So if you look down and, and well, let's say somebody came to us with depression, we would ask them some of these questions like, what is your diet like and how is your sleep and what are your relationships like and is there a lot of stress in your life and what is your digestion like? Do you exercise? And so instead of just, you know, um, um, looking at them and just trying to find an herb for them, we really might use the herbs as a band-aid, right? But we've got to build their nutrition. We've got to get them to reduce the stress in their 
our lives. And so Western medicine is now starting to realize that we've been doing it right all along. And they are now teaching physicians, both here and in Canada and around the world, about integrative medicine. And so integrative medicine, or functional medicine, is trying to marry the two of these, these um, um, outlooks on health together, which I think is amazing. Uh, next. So last time we went across the country, we talked about cardiovascular disease. And, and we learned that cardiovascular disease is a silent killer because we often don't know what's lurking about in our arteries, oftentimes until it's too late because these symptoms may not be associated with pain and often and sometimes and just until it's too late. Next. So we learned about oxidized LDL being a problem, and this slide looks like so many, so much information and all these numbers, and I just want to make it really clear and easy for you. Where we're going to spend a lot of time is looking at this odds ratio on the right. And I want you to understand that if the number is 1, that means there's no risk. Okay, so if, for instance, if you look under total cholesterol and you see 1.2, really it, it honestly means there's extremely very little risk in that. But let's look at this slide so that you have an understanding. So you went to your physician and you had what's called a lipid panel done. You know, you had your cholesterol checked and you fasted all night long and, and you went to have your cholesterol checked and, and your physician gave you a report and, and they said, your triglycerides are high. Well, if you look over in the odds ratio, that means that you have just over a two times greater risk factor of having a cardiovascular event than someone who doesn't have high triglycerides. And then we go to total cholesterol, and the, the physician says, well, you know, your, your cholesterol is high. Remember, one means no risk. So total cholesterol number is not a number that we really give that much credence to. We don't really pay much attention to that because it doesn't really predict disease as well as, as it used to. So we look at high LDL. Now LDL stands for low density lipoprotein cholesterol. LDL is considered the bad cholesterol. So if that's high, the bad cholesterol is high, okay, well, not even a two times greater risk. So now you're going to start to see what really does matter, and what matters is your good cholesterol. So HDL stands for high density lipoprotein, and the little c is for cholesterol. That's your good cholesterol. So if your good cholesterol is low, now look over at that odds ratio you now have over a six and a half time greater risk of having a cardiovascular event. And by an event, I mean that could be a stroke, a heart attack, aneurysms, you know, all of those types of things. But here's where it gets really interesting. Previously, we were told that all cholesterol was bad, and then a distinction was made between the bad cholesterol, LDL, and the good cholesterol, HDL. But now science is really looking at something called an oxidized cholesterol, being the more damaging of all these cholesterols. So now we look at if we have oxidized LDL, folks, look you have an eight times greater risk of having a cardiovascular event. And if you have oxidized LDL and your good cholesterol, the HDL, is low, this is where the problems come in. Now you're at a 14 times greater risk of having a cardiovascular event. So we have to figure out what we're going to do about this next. So this is a, an interesting chart, and it's, it's showing us about uh, the World Health Organization. So the World Health Organization looks at every country and, and it looks at the prevalence of disease. And what they're telling us is, of course, that heart disease is the leading cause of death around the world. And if you click again, Rancha, we're going to see that 80% of those with diabetes will actually die of cardiovascular disease. 
So diabetes is something that we really have to, to pay attention to as well. So next, the latest news now, and this is what we're going to focus the majority of our, our webinar on this evening, is that the latest research is confirming that your diet does affect what's called your microbiome. And the microbiome, oh, they call it the ecological community, they call it the um, eco eco-intestinal system. I want you to think of it as the balance between the good and bad bacteria in your body. And so the research is showing us that how we eat determines what our bacteria uh, diversity and abundance will be in our bodies. Now we kind of knew that already because when we're working with someone with candida yeast, we know that there's an overgrowth of fungus in the body. So we kind of already know that diet plays a role in this, but we're going to look at this a little bit closer. So again, the microbiome is big science. Next. So here you're looking at um, uh, a very um, prestigious medical uh, university in the States, and it's Pennsylvania State University, and right on the cover of their magazine, they're talking about microbiomics, and they're saying, is it the next big thing? And I'm going to tell you folks, it is. You may be learning something tonight that your physician isn't even aware of yet, because this is, this is cutting-edge stuff. And this is where all of the research is now focusing, and, and I've been looking at this um, very, very closely, and I find it just one of the most fascinating topics ever in Western medicine. I'm just really enamored with it. So, But what I want you to know is it's not just in natural health. You know, we've been talking about cleaning the colon, and we've been talking about cleaning the liver, and, you know, the, the gut microbiome, although we didn't call it that. We called it the good and bad bacteria. We've been talking about that for 50, 60 years, but now all of a sudden, Medicine has realized, hmm, well, maybe those people do know a thing or two. Next. So this is kind of an animated slide, and what it's going to show you is the effects of what we call the poor food choices. And how this works, if you click again, you'll see that the healthy food, of course, that the healthier plant foods that we eat, the better bacteria we have in our body. And likewise, if we click again, we're going to see that, of course, the bad diet leads to an unhealthy balance of bad bacteria in the body. And if we click again, we can see that once this bad bacteria gets in charge, all kinds of things happen in the body. Our health declines. There's inflammation in the body. We have toxicity. And so it sounds rather simple, like, okay, well, all we have to do is change our diet, right? So next. Well, we know that it's not simple, right? People decide their habits. And then our habits are going to decide our future. So tonight as you watch this webinar and maybe even after we finish with the webinar, I want you to actually think about the next time you go to eat something, how is your habit, your eating habits or your exercise habits or your whatever kind of habits you have, how is that going to affect your future? Not just the now, but the future. So what we have to realize is that we have to transform what we call the impossible, oh, I can't do that, that's impossible, I can't eat that way, I can't exercise. We have to change that way of thinking from impossible to possible and from unattainable to attainable. Next. So here's where we're going to look at this a little bit closer. We now know that our diet is intimately linked to our gut. These poor eating habits create inflammation in our gut. Now the inflammation then leads to this microbial imbalance. We've got more of the bad than we should and less of the good bacteria. But that mess also doesn't allow our bodies to use glucose and insulin properly. We're going to describe exactly what that is so you'll understand it completely. It also creates this free radical damage in the body, which where it says on the slide, the rampant oxidation. But what's so fascinating is scientists have discovered that certain strains of bad bacteria 
create a waste material of their own, and they're called endotoxins. And these endotoxins actually get into the body. So this is just the science is figuring out really the cause of disease in our body, and they're strongly focusing on this gut. So you can see in the slide, the inflammatory processes created by the foods that we've eaten are increasing our risk of diabetes, increasing our risk of obesity, as well as cardiovascular issues. Next. So back to our inner ecosystem. We jokingly say that you're only 10% human because what we now know is that we have 100 trillion cells in our gut and only 10 trillion cells in our DNA. So folks, if you're thinking about this, that's, we have 10 times more cells in our gut than in our DNA. That makes it incredibly important for us to keep that bacteria in check. Next. So here's an, a good illustration. I want to talk a little bit about what we call bacteroidetes. And bacteroidetes, the, the gal on the left, that's supposed to make up the most substantial portion of our gastrointestinal flora, of our bacteria, the good bacteria. And what the bacteroidetes do is they actually benefit the host. They keep pathogens and, and things from colonizing in our body and kind of keep that bad bacteria in check. And how you increase that is by eating plant foods. You can see that the gal is completely colorful and she's eating produce. And, the other thing that increases that, of course, is protein. But when you look at the one on the right, they're called firmicutes. And those are the bacteria that produce the toxins, called endotoxins. And these are toxins that can survive extreme conditions in the body. And as you can probably see by the image, these are increased by a high simple carbohydrate diet. So if we look at the next slide, we talk about, uh, can you click for me, yep. Rancha? Yep. So after a two-year visit to the United States, Michelangelo's David returned to Italy, and if you'll click that for me, and that's what he ended up looking like. And if you click another four times, you're going to see the, the contributors, of course, to our statue there. We always got to chuckle about that in the, uh, in the classes. And we're having fun with that. But folks, it, it really is true. It used to be just the United States that was obese. And then the word, the word globesity came to be because it's not just the United States anymore. I will say, sadly, it's because our junk food has permeated the entire world. But really, it is something that is, is, is just happening everywhere today. So let's click one more time. Let's look at the correlation, here we go, about the obese people having more firmicutes and the lean people having more of those, what we call those bacteroidetes. And of course, you can see the PC guy and the Mac guy. And we're, again, we're having fun with that. But again, remember that the lean people have more bacteroidity bacteria in their body, which many of them were blessed and born with, but they've continued to support it with a high protein and especially very rich in high plant foods. So here's now where it gets very interesting on the next slide. What we're looking at here is, I think, one of the most amazing things researchers have done. What they did is they took gut microbes, so feces, fecal, fecal matter, from identical twins where one of them was obese and one of them was lean. And then what they did is they introduced that bacteria into identical twin mice. Identical twin mice. So they took these two white mice that were equal in weight, equal in size, and they took a, a, a feces from the thin, uh, a thin twin and a, and a heavy set twin and they inserted it into the mice. And if we go to the next slide, you will observe the changes. And folks, this is true. This study was conducted in September of 2013 at the Washington University School of Medicine in St. Louis, Missouri. 
Now what you can see here is that the obese humans microbes resulted in obese mites. And you might think, well, what does that have to do with anything? Folks, these, these mice were still fed the same exact diet, the same amount of calories, had the same amount of exercise. The only difference is in what we call the gut microbiome. Next. So for those of you who would like to really learn a lot about this, all you have to do is go to YouTube or uh, probably YouTube and find Dr. Perlmutter. And he is an advocate of fecal, what we call fecal transplants. And here in the States, they're doing fecal transplants. They are taking morbidly obese people and they are using lean donors and transplanting some of their feces into the morbidly obese person. Yes, it's $3,000 a treatment, and it takes quite a few treatments to do this, and they're doing it at three different clinics, or actually university hospitals around the U.S., but the results are just absolutely phenomenal. Now, what I say is for $3,000, I can get a whole lot of good food and a whole lot of um, herbs and, and vitamins, so I think I'll pass on the fecal transplant. But I want you to understand that this is really out there now. And boy, they thought that, that uh, the herbalists were crazy, right? So next, we need to change our diet if we're going to change our gut microbiome. So you don't want that fecal transplant. We've got to start thinking about what can we do to change our diet in order to improve our gut. Because remember, food produces inflammation. The inflammation creates that whole insulin and glucose uh, dysfunction in the body. And so this is kind of where we have to start with what goes in our mouth. So go ahead, Rancha, and go to the next slide. This is a visual, and I like this visual because it, it kind of explains that whole endotoxin thing. So remember, if we have an overabundance of bad bacteria in the body, this creates that waste material called an endotoxin. And what that endotoxin does is it creates inflammation. Now, if you look at if you take that inflammation, take your eyes down to the bottom right-hand side of the slide, and it talks about the gut toxins, and that's where we're going to start. If you look beneath that, that is supposed to be um, an image of our, it's called our, our intestinal barrier. It's the wall of our intestine. And what inflammation does is it makes that wall leaky, leaky. So you've heard of leaky gut syndrome. Endotoxins can make that gut, through inflammation, leaky. Now, that little green blob there is supposed to be the endotoxin. The endotoxin then gets into the bloodstream, and it has the ability to attach to muscles, become buried in fat, be transported to the liver and cause problems, as well as to the brain and other organ areas of the body. So these, you are, it, it's kind of like self-toxicity in the body just by having this overabundance of those firmicutes. Or, and it's not that we, oh, by the way, I should clarify, we don't just have two kinds of bacteria in our gut. Researchers have now, um, um, they're actually studying the microbiome and they're trying to analyze how many different kinds of bacteria we have. And so far to date, they're saying that the minimum they've ever found in anyone was 400 different kinds of bacteria. Uh, and the most they've ever seen was 6,000 different kinds. So we're talking lots of diversity there. But the two main ones that inhabit our gut are the Bacteroidetes and the Firmicutes. So now, let's go back to our slide. So we look at inflammation, and you'll see now that it leads to insulin resistance and metabolic function. And we'll talk about that in just a minute, if you want to go next. So here's what they did. They took people that were healthy, healthy subjects, and they had them eating the Western, you know, the standard American diet, the Western diet for one month only, folks, one month. And they increased the endotoxin levels in these people's bodies by 71% in one month. 
I mean, that is just phenomenal to me. I mean, to think that we can destroy our bodies in, well, say like a, a six weeks' time, we can completely change our gut. And when they took the unhealthy people and they introduced a healthy diet, they were able to reduce the levels by 31%. So this means it's going to take us three months at a minimum of being really cautious and conscious of what we're eating in order to change our gut. So I always ask people, can you commit to just one month of eating well, just one month out of your entire life? I think we probably all can do that if we put our heads to it. So let's look at the next slide. And you'll have to click this four times, Rancha, for me. This is just a few of the slides that talk about uh, the research projects that have been done showing the studies that have been done on the endotoxins and how it relates to this whole insulin resistance, you know, obesity, and the blood sugar stuff, and science is all tying it back to the gut microbiome as the underlying cause of all this dysfunction in the body. And on the next slide, you'll see a two, uh, 2014 study where researchers took something called berberine. Now, berberine is not an herb. Berberine is a, a piece of an herb. It's a, it's a compound. It's a constituent of a plant. It's kind of the medicinal part, uh, one of the medicinal parts of a plant. And they, they isolated that, and they used it in their research. And what they showed is that it can reduce the binding of the endotoxins and can block inflammation. So folks, that's pretty interesting that they're, they're really looking long and hard at plant medicine. Next. This was a really interesting study, and this is one where researchers found that when uh, those with type 2 diabetes were on antibiotics, the person's blood sugar numbers improved. And while they were scratching their heads trying to figure out what that was all about, they also realized that type 2 diabetics that took probiotics, their numbers improved. So again, this all tied them right back to that gut bacteria, realizing that when you take an antibiotic, it kills all bacteria in the body, the good and the bad. Of course, it leaves a fungal presence there, but um, that's what it does. And so, of course, it would improve their numbers because we're talking about that bad bacteria. Likewise, when someone takes a probiotic, the good bacteria, of course, that's going to improve the numbers in type 2 diabetes because now they're populating more of that bacteroidetes. So in the next slide, I'd like to explain what happens, I usually use my hands to do this, so I'm going to try and do this with my eyes closed so I'll, I can get, give you the, the picture. So you're 20 years old and you're, you're eating Girl Scout cookies and uh, all your cells are young and you have three or four cookies and, and um, you're, the, the cookie broke down to what's called a carbohydrate, or the carbohydrate, I'm sorry, broke down to something called glucose, which is like sugar, and it entered your bloodstream. And because you're young and everything is working right, your pancreas released insulin. Insulin is a hormone. And if you look over with the, the kind of like the lock over here, insulin is a key that unlocks the cell so that the glucose, the sugar, can get into the cell because that's where we want it. We want to fuel our brain. We want to fuel our muscles. We want to fuel the organs of our body. That's what we're designed to do is to burn this uh, carbohydrate. So what goes wrong in type 2 diabetes is this. Let's fast forward now you're 60 and you really kind of didn't eat that well and there's some inflammation in your body and so the inflammation has made the cell membrane stiff. Now you eat that same amount of cookie that you did 20 or 40 years ago. It still broke down. The carbohydrate broke down to glucose. The glucose entered your bloodstream. The pancreas released insulin. But now because that cell membrane is stiffened, it's locked, and the insulin can't get into the cell. 
And if the insulin can't get into the cell, the sugar can't get into the cell, the glucose can't get into the cell, and so it's stored as fat. Now, if we go to the next slide, let's talk about insulin resistance. Insulin resistance, which means that that cell membrane is stiff, it's resistant to insulin, it is one of the unrecognized causes of infertility and PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome, in women. PCOS is not an ovarian problem, it's an insulin problem. And what happens when women are insulin resistant after it has gone on for a very long time, they will start to grow facial hair while losing the hair on their head. Many of these women will develop acne and have irregular menstrual cycles, which again, which is why it's, it's so difficult to get pregnant oftentimes with PCOS. Now, for men with insulin resistance, what that does is it drives their testosterone down. Now, when you drive a man's testosterone down, their sex drive, their sex function is significantly impaired, and then their low testosterone leads to a decreased muscle mass and more belly fat deposition. So you see, we really have to work on getting that cell membrane softened so that it can accept that insulin and then stop eating so many simple carbohydrates that we can change the gut and that there is less assault on the cells of that glucose trying to get in. So if we go to the next slide, you'll see that there are just all kinds of names for this type 2 diabetes. Can you advance the slide for me? There we go. Um, otherwise known as uh, prediabetes syndrome X's, all the metabolic type syndromes, whether it's cardio or dysmetabolic, hyperinsulinemia. I mean, you can see that there are so many names. And the, and the diabetes, that's a fairly new term. And that was, that was actually designed by a physician in Los Angeles working with pediatric diabetes or diabetes. Can you imagine? There is a department now dealing with diabetic children. What we do know is that one out of three children born after 2010 will become diabetic in their teen years. So this Dr. Francis Kaufman has been one of the, the researchers on childhood um, uh, diabetes, calling it diabetes. So next slide. Diab diabetes is you're resistant to insulin. Now this is different than, uh, so diabetes, uh, type 2 diabetes, metabolic syndrome, again, it's all the same thing. But this is very different from type 1 diabetes. Type 1 diabetes usually occurs, it, we call it juvenile diabetes, it usually occurs young, uh, you know, early in life. And this is where the cells, the beta cells in your pancreas that produce the insulin are actually um, destroyed by your immune system. It's an autoimmune disorder. So that is not reversible. Once those beta cells die, you cannot rebuild them. However, type 2 diabetes is re uh, reversible. And yes, there may be some ge genetic components, and yes, you may have a predisposition to it, and certainly our environment um, and the gut bacteria all contribute, but it is reversible. So on the next slide, we're going to see some of the, the risk, oh, maybe not, here we go. Um, we're going to see berberine, and berberine, as we talked about in um, that clinical trial, one of the trials that they used berberine in claimed or stated that it worked just as well as metformin while decreasing the triglycerides and the total cholesterol in the body. So not only does it regulate uh, blood sugar and insulin, but it also works on cardiovascular issues. Next. So in another trial, they showed that berberine lowered the triglycerides by nearly 36%. The LDL, the low density, the bad cholesterol, by about 21% compared to a control group. And what you're looking at here is 
a, a plant called Indian barberry, and that is one of the sources for berberine. Next. So you're going to see this, this image a little bit more. I'm going to shrink it down and put it on the slides for you. But this just sums it up. This whole presentation, you could sum it up with this slide. And that is that a high-carbohydrate high diet, simple carbohydrate diet, is going to change, negatively change, that gut microbiome, which then, as we know, creates those toxins, resulting in what we call endotoxemia. And that endotoxemia creates that inflammation. Inflammation is at the root of all disease, so that starts that whole insulin resistance, leads to that metabolic dysfunction. And then we also have, across the bottom, that obesity that also plays into this metabolic syndrome, which of course then untreated and, and, and un, uh, or not reversed with diet and lifestyle becomes diabetes, which leads to cardiovascular disease. So we really do need the berberine, the probiotics, and the omegas. And these have all been studied in research you know, and shown that they are very effective. Next. So here is where we're talking about our probiotics. We've got to get our probiotics. I like this little image, but um, we need to change our diet. So think about what you can change. What can you change? And the things that destroy the probiotics are, of course, antibiotics, birth control pills, steroids, and uh, too much coffee. Now, a cup, or, you know, a cup of coffee here and there, not a problem, but I've had clients in the past that have had 16 cups of coffee a day. Well, that's a little excessive. Um, uh, drinking um, uh, too much, um, uh, too many acidic beverages and sodas and, and sugar imbalance, all of these things um, really do affect the probiotics. And on the next slide, we're going to see some food sources of probiotics. So as you look at this and you say, okay, got it, you know, I do like kefir, I like yogurt. Now the sauerkraut, folks, it has to be raw sauerkraut. So this can't be something that has been canned. And if it is in a jar, it has to be in the refrigerated section of the store for it to be raw. If it's just sitting on the shelf in a can or in a jar, it is not raw. Because high heat kills most of those good bacteria. So we're looking at this and we say, okay, kefir, yogurt, sauerkraut, coconut kefir, kombucha, kvass, which by the way is a Slavic beverage made from fermented black rye bread. Isn't that interesting? And the natto, the Japanese just use soybeans and they put a probiotic on it called bacillus and they let it ferment and that is one of the things that they eat. And so raw cheese is picked kimchi, there's all kinds of things that we can do. But when you look at that list, ask yourself, do you really consume all of these foods every day or do you even get any of them every day? Remember, we've got a whole lot of reversing we have to do in that gut to get us back to health. So next. We're looking at omega-3 fatty acids. I briefly mentioned that we need to soften the cell membrane. And one of the things that omega-3 fatty acids do in the body is exactly that. They soften the cell membranes. So we're looking at this slide and we're seeing that a number of these things have to do with cardiovascular. So triglycerides, arrhythmias, you know, blood clotting, inflammation, high blood pressure. But the omega-3s are also used by our brain, our joints, our nerve sheath, of our eyes. I mean, many, many areas of our body rely on omega-3s. And as it relates to this lecture, we're thinking about how we need them to soften that cell membrane. So on the next slide, let's take a look of where do we get these omega-3 foods? We've looked at our probiotic foods. Where are we getting our omegas? Um, remember, if the omega-3 is making that cell membrane more fluid and more flexible, that helps it to be more receptive to that insulin and glucose getting in. So we look at the slide and we say, okay, well, I'm going to tell you you need between three and eight grams of omegas a day. And again, that that varies with everyone, but as a, as a rule of thumb, um, three to eight, 
So you say, well, okay, I'll do two tablespoons of flax seeds every day, and that'll give me three, and then I'll have a quarter of a cup of, of walnuts every day, and that'll give me two. And yeah, you can do that. But folks, really, are you going to do that every day for the rest of your life? And there might be someone out there that does, and God bless you. I mean, if you can do that every day, I like my diet to be a lot more varied. So for myself, I just don't get as many of those omegas that I would like to get. Now, flax and walnut and sardines top the list. And yes, there's also salmon and soybeans. But again, where are you getting at least three grams a day. And we're looking at that little diagram and we say, okay, I've got to get berberine, I've got to get probiotics, I've got to get omegas. So let's go to the next slide. And likewise, we, we, we know we're not eating enough of the probiotic foods. Can we have the next slide? There we go. Um, we're not getting enough probiotic foods. We're not getting enough of our omega foods. And likewise, we're not eating berberine. This is this is another berberine plant. Remember, this is is it, it's not a the name of a plant. It's found in golden seal. It's found in prickly poppy, um, something called Oregon grape, Chinese golden thread, California poppy, Indian barberry. Tree turmeric is Indian barberry, but this is an amazing, amazing plant, and we're certainly not eating that on a daily basis to get what we need for our little chart. Next. And on this slide, we'll see that, my goodness, we're not eating bergamot either. Bergamot is a special kind of orange. It's actually a sour orange. It looks more like a, a lumpy lemon than an orange. But bergamot has been shown to dramatically lower triglycerides and the bad cholesterol while raising that good cholesterol. It also has the ability to lower fatty deposits in our liver and in our pancreas, and it helps us support our healthy uh, glucose levels in the body. So I'm not getting bergamot anywhere, and I'm pretty sure you aren't either. Next. On this slide, we're noticing CoQ10. So these are all the important things that we need. And I'll say, after the age of 40, truly, this is when we need all this stuff. And this is a great illustration because it shows us how the CoQ10 levels, they actually decline the older we get. And we say that our production peaks at age 20. But if you look by age 80, for instance, our heart only has about 43% of the CoQ10 that it had when we were 20. Our lungs, maybe 52%. Our kidneys, 65%. And if you think about it, what do the elderly die of? They die of cardiovascular disease, chronic kidney disease, and all kinds of, of respiratory things, pneumonias and you know, um, asthma and those types of things. So. On the next slide, let's look at the food sources for CoQ10. So, I mean, golly, when you start to think of, and in here, folks, we're just talking about probiotics, omegas, CoQ10 foods. That's not even our vitamins and minerals. It's easy to see that it's next to impossible to get all the nutrients that we need on a daily basis. It, it truly is. So, I mean, are you eating these foods in large amounts every day? Um, you know, we kind of laugh about eating reindeer and organ meats, but I mean, we really don't see a lot of foods on there that we are consuming on a daily basis. And on the next slide, here's this is even more uh, poignant. If you if you notice, it says that the pork heart. So we're going to eat a pig's heart every day. We can get that 200 milligrams of CoQ10 that that researchers are saying that we need between 100 and 200 milligrams a day. But if you notice in that last column, it's telling us the amount that we absorb out of that. So CoQ10 is not necessarily highly absorbable out of the foods that we eat. And that's because our liver makes that enzyme. Our liver is responsible for making that enzyme. And that enzyme, it's CoQ10, coenzyme Q10, that's responsible for providing energy to the body, for protecting the cell membranes. But inflammation reduces it, aging reduces it, poor diet reduces it, pharmaceutical medications reduce it, and so thus we're left with this, this deficiency. So next slide. So we've got a big problem here, and we've got to think about how we are going to combat this diabetes. Well, folks, 
a problem is an opportunity for a solution. And if you want to click, this is where you folks come in. So, just, uh, I think uh, Ranch has got a few little things she wants to tell us, and then we'll go into the products. Wonderful. Uh, just a reminder that this has been recorded and will be up on the Nature Sunshine website, uh, most likely by the end of the week, so Thursday or Friday. So you will have the PowerPoint as well as the recording of this. Um, we're going to be talking about an amazing product coming up, and there are some great videos. And these videos are available on the Nature Sunshine website. So you would just click on the product, uh, and then after, on that product page, you will see the video. So those are great to share on your Facebook page or via email or anything like that with family and friends to let them know about um, our amazing products. So uh, I believe I'd love to hang, uh, hand it over to you, Cindy. Okay, so let's look at that first product, Rancha. The first one that we're introducing tonight is Berberine IR. We've already seen what Berberine can do in research. Now the IR actually stands for insulin response not insulin uh, resistance, but insulin response because we're, we're providing what the body needs to get a better response from that insulin. And remember this graphic? I told you you'd see it a while back. This, I mean, you know, you'd see it often. This berberine is something that will help us not only with changing the gut microbiome and the endotoxins, but also with that metabolic dysfunction. This is something, berberine has been used for nearly 5,000 years in China. Go ahead. So you can see that it's going to be a perfect companion for whether you're doing a, a blood glucose, you're trying to get your body to utilize glucose and insulin effectively, if you're on a detoxification program, a cleansing program, whether you're on a weight loss program, berberine is something that can help with all of those uh, issues or challenges in the body. And as a side note, it truly helps the gut absorb the nutrients better. So you're going to be able to get more nutrition out of the foods that you're eating. Next. Also, remember, we talked about in the research how it can help inhibit the binding of the endotoxins to that muscle cell. So we've kind of got that little graphic there on the right. So you can see that this product does so many things in the body with just one capsule three times a day before a meal. That's really what it's all about. It's, it, so if you look and there's 90 capsules in that bottle, that's just a month's supply to uh, really start changing that gut over. Next. We also have to remember though that we can't just start taking berberine IR and keep eating the way that we've been eating. Remember, those high carbohydrate diets negatively change that gut microflora, increases the um, firmicutes that produce those endotoxins. So we really have to not only just use the product, but also make that lifestyle change. Um, remember, those endotoxins get released into the bloodstream and they're interfering with that normal glucose metabolism. And so Again, we want to do more than just take the product. We have to change the diet to change the gut because it's the gut that's getting us in trouble with so many things. Next. We talked about probiotics. Probiotics are used in so many different areas of the body. Uh, of course, in the intestine, in the digestive system, our immune system, they help to eliminate toxins from the body. They work on conditions of the skin, of the vagina, um, our oral health, immune system, urinary system. I mean, this is something that our body uses, my goodness, exclusively for our immune system and the gut microbiome. So we looked at the foods. We know we're not getting enough. We need to start supplying our body with additional um, probiotics, especially while we're on that path of changing our gut microbiome. Next. We talked about how important the omega-3 fatty acids are. Now remember, when something is called an essential fatty acid, and super omegas, the omega-3s, are an essential fatty acid, what that means is that it 
must be supplied through diet or supplementation. The body cannot make it. Now these days it's very well known that women who are pregnant are now being uh, told to consume omega-3 fatty acids because we know that it helps in the brain and eye development in the infant. So these are really powerful. Almost all infant formula today has essential fatty acids in it. So if, if they're supplementing it, why aren't we, right? We've got to get that cell membrane softened again. Next. Also remember that these omega-3s reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease. They help our structural system. They lubricate our joints. They keep our skin from cracking in these uh, dry winters uh, with all the furnaces running. That Again, it feeds our brain, our eyes, softens our cell membrane. So those three things are so important for a 90-day program. Let's go next to the next slide. Here's my challenge. Here's my call to action for you. I want you to really seriously consider doing this for 90 days. And why I say 90 days is if you recall back to when we talked about adding in a prudent diet to those people with that compromised gut bacteria. Recall that in one month's time, they could improve that gut bacteria by about 31%. Thus, it's going to take you 90 days. 90 days to change that gut bacteria in order for you to see the real full changes in your body. So if you got a bottle of berberine each month for the next three months and you got a bottle of, of uh, the acidophilus bifidophilus and you got a bottle of the omegas and you got one box of clean start. Now I threw that one in there because we really talked a lot about that at convention and last November when we when we were doing our tour across Canada. Clean Start is a program that has 20, it's, it has 28 packets in it. It's designed as a 14-day program. But what I like people to do while they're undergoing this 90-day challenge, as I call it, I like them to just take one packet of the Clean Start every night at bedtime. Thus, it will last the entire first month of your 90-day program. Well, the first 28 days anyway. And we don't want to take that with our omegas because of the fiber and, and the bentonite will act in the Clean Start product will actually kind of absorb that omega-3 and it won't get into your body the way you need it. So if you take that clean start at bedtime and you start cleaning out your colon and you're taking the berberine and that's working on killing the endotoxins and it's and it's 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 increasing the good bacteria and doing a number of things for the glucose and your weight management program and then you add in the bifidophilus I'm sure you could see that this is an amazing program to really reduce the inflammation detoxify indirectly help you with weight loss cleansing new gut health regulating blood sugar this is my challenge to you folks I'm telling you commit to just 90 days, just 90 days. Uh, and the next slide. So once again, and you want to click it, remember this slide. We've got to support the cardiovascular system while we're working on increasing our blood sugar and things like that. So on the next slide, what I'm going to show you is if you're over 40, I highly recommend, we've already got the super omegas on the right, but if you're over 40, I highly recommend that you add that CoQ10 and the Cardiox in. Now we've talked a lot about the CoQ10. We know that as we age, the numbers decline, and we also know that the Cardiox is, well, we don't know. I think I'm going to tell you about that, actually, as I think about it. The CoQ10 is something we absolutely have to add in after the age of 40. There is a huge decline. That's cardiovascular health. That's energy for the cells. That's energy for you. You need that energy. So let's look at why we need to put Cardiox in. If we can hit the next slide. So Cardiox is a cardiac LDL is that bergamot orange and what it does is this particular product reduces the um, oxidized cholesterol, the, the bad cholesterol if you will, and increases the good cholesterol. 
On the next slide, you're going to actually see the label. And this is what makes this formula so amazing. It's a proprietary blend, meaning nobody else has this, just nature sunshine. And these proprietary blend, these plants were added in to enhance the action of the bergamot orange. So this proprietary blend is, I like to call it the secret in the sauce. It's kind of the sum total of everything together in the formula that makes it so effective. Others can't provide this. Um, it's a proprietary product. Only Nature Sunshine has it. And in order for them to build this product, create this product, they took live cells and watched them under a microscope to see how they would respond to this different combination, how they could make that bergamot orange be most effective in the body. Next slide. So this is a, a very unique blend, but along with working on the cardiovascular system, it also helps with the blood glucose levels, the insulin levels. And I want you to notice that at the bottom of the slide, they're talking about a, um, a uh, what was it called, a web link, and it says Bergamot Science. Whoop, we went ahead one slide. Can you go back one slide, Rancha? There we go. Um, on the bottom of this slide, you'll see it says BergamotScience.com. That's a third-party website that you can visit that won't have Nature Sunshine anywhere on it, but it will actually help show you the science and how this product is so effective. And you can copy that link and send it to people, and they can read all about the research, and it's, it's really quite interesting. Okay, next to CoQ10. So, again, CoQ10, the University of, of Maryland recommends CoQ10 um, for most of their patients because they know that pharmaceuticals deplete it in the body. Um, any pharmaceutical used to reduce cholesterol or high blood pressure or any uh, antidepressants that are consumed, that can lower the CoQ10 in the body. Next. So remember this little graph that showed it how it declines with age? CoQ10 not only supports you know, the heart and the kidneys and the lungs, but also the liver, the pancreas. I mean, it really is system-wide, and it's going to take you a good four to 12 weeks, again, another three months for you to really experience that energy that you're looking for. Next. So the, the dosage is one capsule twice a day, and remembering that your the CoQ10 peaks at 25, and as they say, it plummets at age 40. We've got to make sure that we keep that level high. Um, they say that it's anti-aging in a sense, and I think I, I just have a really quick little story. I know we're running out of time, but I want to tell it is my granddaughter. I'm 63 years old, and my granddaughter knows that I'm a very energetic grandma, and. Um, I went out to San Diego to visit her, and she was just so delighted to see me and ran and jumped into my arms. She's nine years old, and she says, Grandma, Grandma, I told my friend that you were coming today because she lives in San Diego, and I live in Michigan, so it's always an event. And she said, and Grandma, my friend asked me, is your grandma old and wrinkly? And Grandma, I told her, she's not old and wrinkly. She's young and wrinkly. And I got such a big kick out of that. So, you know, I'll take young, young and wrinkly anytime over old and wrinkly. So as we go to the next slide, remember these, um, oh, I think there's one, we already did that one. Go ahead. I don't know why that's in there twice. There we go. Remember that you can only blame mom and dad and grandma and grandpa 20 to 30 percent of the time. That's all we can attribute to our genes. Really, the rest is what you have done with that body. Next. So this is kind of a cute little cartoon, and it says, um, uh, sometimes it's good to change your walking routine. Try walking around the block instead of wandering around the kitchen. I mean, folks, how good do you want to feel, really? You've got to make a change. You've got to make a change. Go ahead. So I love this slide. So are you healthy? Yes, keep doing what you're doing. Are you healthy? No. Do you want to be healthy? No. Keep doing what you're doing. Otherwise, are you healthy? No. Do you want to be healthy? Yes. Then you've got to change something. 
On the next slide, once again, I'm just going to reiterate, commit to a 90-day program. Get your blood sugar back in balance. Get that insulin response working. Get your gut back to where it's healthy and, and has that that predominance of the bacteroidetes, that good bacteria. And indirectly, you'll even lose some weight, you know what I mean? And then for the next slide, if you're over 40, please consider adding in the CoQ10 and the Cardiox LDL. And I think after 90 days, you're going to see a tremendous difference in your health. Francia, I think it's back to you. All righty. Well, thank you so much, <clears throat> Cindy, for that uh, wonderful presentation. Um, the berberine video is available, like I mentioned, on the website. So you would just go under products, click on berberine, and then the video is there. So you can link it and share with your family and friends. So that's definitely something you'd want to do. As well as the Cardiac LDL and the Clean Start, there's videos for those products as well. So it's just a wonderful thing to uh, to share with uh, people um to let them know about the product. So we have a promotion exclusively only for people on this webinar, so it's very exciting. So it's 10% uh, off your order, full PV, plus free shipping, and that's for three business days after this webinar. So basically today's Tuesday, so that would, be me, that would mean Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So you have until the end of Friday to place your order. This is only uh, via phone or fax, and we're doing a draw. So everyone that places an order will go into a draw for $100 in retail products. So that's very exciting. So make sure you take advantage of that. You just need to place your order by the end of day Friday. And again, that's phone or fax only. Um, we have a list of all the attendees, so we'll be submitting that to our customer service department. So that's for everyone. So just to let you know about that. So please uh, take advantage of that. We have some upcoming webinars coming up. Tomorrow night, we have another webinar, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and that's with uh, Kimberly Ballas, and she's going to be talking about nutrition. March is National Nutrition Month, and she'll be talking about nutrition and how our amazing products fit into um, a healthy lifestyle. Then on March 9th at 9 p.m. Eastern, we have the Manager Development Webinar, and we are doing uh, a webinar on how to run an effective trade show. So I'm really hoping that you'll be able to be on that one. On March 14th at noon, we have um, a welcome to our new business associates. On the 28th at uh, 9 p.m., we have a webinar on the NSP opportunity, so feel free to uh, invite anyone that is interested in learning more about NSP. And then on the 29th at 9, we have a webinar on what is INFORM, and that's for anyone that's interested in learning more about the INFORM program and what it means to be a participant. Um, so really excited about all these great webinars, so definitely put them in your calendar and take advantage of them. So this is the promotion. Today is, um, we are in the month of March. <laughs> and uh, this is the promotion for the month of March, and that's for joining the business, uh, business associates. You have the different levels there, and the product for this month is chlorophyll, chlorophyll liquid chlorophyll, so make sure that uh, you are sharing that with everyone. Also, for renewing your membership for the month of March, the promotion is uh, liquid chlorophyll as well, as you can see there. All of these promos are on the website, um, so you can check them out there. And last but certainly not least is I Inspire, which is so exciting, and uh, this is the qualification started on February 1st, so we're one month in, and it's very exciting that we have a new component, and that's the INFORM program, so you earn points um, for being in, uh, running an INFORM program, so definitely if you're an INFORM coach, take advantage of it. We just launched a promotion today, as of uh, so it was basically from March 1st to March 25th. Uh, it, we're offering double points for Sunshine Rewards uh, enrollees. So when you enroll someone in Sunshine Rewards, you're going to get double the amount of points towards I Inspire. So that's just from March 1st to the 25th. So you definitely want to take advantage of that. Uh, very excited about uh, that, and we're excited about this amazing uh, uh, promotion that we have for 2016. So again, I just want to thank Cindy so much for your time this evening. Again, this was recorded and will be put on the website uh, so everybody have, has access to it. Uh, so again, thank you so much for your time. Uh, I hope that we have uh, you know, the people that were on here on tomorrow's webinar with uh, Kimberly Ballas. It'll be uh, another fantastic evening. Um, but again, thanks everyone for your time. Thank you, Cindy, for uh, Thank you. For thank you, everyone. Yeah. You wrapped it up from beginning to end. We started live, and you're finishing via webinar. So truly appreciate uh, your time here with us this evening. My pleasure, always. All right. Well, thanks, everyone. Have a great evening, and we will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.